Wearable technologies are all the rage. Even your grandma is counting steps with her pedometer these days. It's easy to write off this wave of technology as some kind of passing fad, bound for a box in the attic between the Nordic track and those shake weights. But this trend is a revolution in disguise. This is the age of the quantified self. Mobile health devices like the Fitbit, Up, Pulso 2, Strive, and the forthcoming iWatch collect constant, real-time information about sleep patterns, eating habits, stress levels, and much, much more. This data is not just for bragging on social media. The information is bridging the gap between personal and public health. With wearable technologies, companies can say with nearly 100% certainty that their users in Tokyo sleep the least, and their users in Stockholm do the most walking. When the recent Napa earthquake hit, Jawbone reported that 93% of its up users near the epicenter woke up at exactly 3.20 a.m., right when the shaking started. 45% of those people never went back to sleep that night. It's projected that more than 485 million wearables will be sold annually by 2018. And all that data about your steps, stretches, sprints, and snoozes will contribute to one of the largest data sets of human behavior ever recorded and in it, a potential goldmine for healthcare providers and medical researchers. That's why projects like OpenM Health are trying to standardize this incoming data. With a basic set of guidelines, doctors may be able to use commercial tracking technology to make recommendations to patients or perform studies on an emerging phenomenon. This data would have been impossible to imagine five years ago. Five years from now, it may be the foundation of an entirely new medical system. But who knows? It's so new that nobody fully understands the implications yet. One thing is for certain. The trend is not going away anytime soon. Good morning, everybody. My name is Peter Animus, and um, I'm the happy father of five daughters. And my previous company, I was tracking the sustainability of the world's 4,000 largest public quoted companies. So we were looking at their water usage, energy usage, etc. So for many years, I've been tracking data and trying to understand big data. Big data is not something new. If you ask me, it has been around for 60 years since we invented the uh, mainframe. But in your industry, in both IT and healthcare, it would become very, very important. So basically, I will correct Sibyl before. Today, we have more people dying of sitting than of smoking. And this is from the Lancet report last year. So human mankind was biologically engineered to walk 10,000 steps per day. How can I say that so secure? just by the amount of oxygen that your lung is naturally consuming and built to consume during a normal day of activity. The biggest problem is obesity. I don't know if you read Spiegel yesterday in Germany, 62% of all men in Germany now over 40 are overweight, 38% of all females. If you go to the Middle East, we are talking about 75%. If you go to America, it's only 20% of all Americans that can do the normal WHO health uh, fitness test, which is 10 push-ups, 60 stomach exercises, etc. So in America, they're getting active. It's the Obamacare that you have heard so much about, and I'm not political active, but basically in Obamacare, there's a very, very important part, which is called 2705, where companies can invest up to 30% of their annual healthcare expense on prevention, on digital prevention. In Europe, they are not inactive. You have Horizon 2020. Horizon 2020 is Europe going digital. So why is all this happening now and why couldn't it happen five years ago or 10 years ago? Simply by the power of computing and the cost of computing. So my iPhone today has the same power like an IBM mainframe that I sold 25 years ago that took 6,000 liters of cold water and about $650 of electricity every day. I have that device on me. It has passive tracking, so it knows if I'm walking, it knows if I'm jogging, etc. So today we have over 2 billion smartphones in the world. We have over 1 billion people on social networks, and we will have an enormous amount of Internet of Things, meaning little devices that are tracking us. McKinsey, you can hate them or love them, I have no preference. They just issued a big report where they said it is time now to move full in for digital healthcare. And the ones that would not do it, I just came from the Wall Street Journal conference in LA, they will get destroyed 
just like you saw in the music business. So think about Big Pharma and Basel, who is still only driven by pharma and not going digital. This is a very high risk. Think about the Swiss uh, watch industry, like Swatch, who is just watching the Apple iWatch coming out and saying, oh, this is nonsense, this is, you know, just fashion. You would remember, hopefully, my speech today in a few years and think back what this uh, weird guy was talking about in Basel. So basically, we are seeing an explosion. I have been in computing science and high tech for the last 30 years. The last time we saw such an explosion was in 1996 with Netscape. And I, what we're seeing here is an explosion in smartphones. So we will go from 2 billion smartphones to 5 billion smartphones. We will go from zero Internet of Things to 50 billion Internet of Things by 2020. And this, you can see guys like myself, we invest money into this. You've never seen such an explosion in private equity into digital healthcare. It increased with over 300% over the last three years. So the last time we saw something similar like this was in 96 with the internet. Out came Netscape, eBay, and you name it. And you're going to see the same in the healthcare industry. Healthcare is the world's largest industry. It's a $6.2 trillion industry where you have no outcome. 95% is analog, and it has been used to be called the patient. It changes. You know how Twitter has changed the political world. Well, guess what? The whole internet will change the pharmaceutical world in a way you cannot imagine. It will become transparent. It will become outcome-based, and it will become consumerized and not a patient anymore. And a consumer wants choice, wants free market, and the right to choose. So basically, the market, you can build it into four different uh, containers. On your left-hand side, you have all of the big boys. So Samsung has announced Sami. Apple has announced the health kit, as we heard from Sibyl before. And you just saw last week that Microsoft now is moving in big time with their Microsoft band and so on. So all these guys, they want to be the data containers. The second are the trackers. So the whole aggregation and devices of these uh, you know, kind of technologies. You will have hundreds of different trackers, and that will come into the different containers. Now, the area where we play is in the analysis of that data and creating an outcome and providing you with a feedback loop. Imagine it like the car navigation system you have in your car today. When you look at the navigation business in cars, about 25 years ago, it was a $700 million business. Today, that is a $55 billion business with Google Maps, etc. So when we look at the latest number here from uh, PwC, you would see that the digital healthcare industry is growing with about 30-something percent, but the mobile health industry will grow with over 80 percent over the next six to seven years. It's the you know, blue part of it. It will become from literally zero or over $55 billion industry over the next uh, five to six years. This is from Castellite. It was one of the hottest IPOs this year. And yes, they do have revenue that went out on NASDAQ in America. Castellite provides transparency in the healthcare sector. Look at this. This is the cost factor of a normal MRI. You have between 100 to 500 percent difference in exactly the same medical procedure across America. If you haven't looked at Castellite, you should go and check it out once. It's very interesting for big pharma and people who like big data. This is from Cisco. It shows the global world of Internet of Things. And if you haven't heard the word, uh, the word yet, it's IoT, and this is the next big thing in computing. You will have 50 billion different sensors by 2020. And out of those 50 billion sensors, about 12 billion will be lifestyle-based. So you will have all different kind of sensors. But what do you care about your blood pressure, your body temperature, etc.? You want to see it in correlation to something which is relevant to your life. So basically, we founded Dakadu in 2010, and I strongly encourage you to go on www.dakadu.com. To check it out, you get an immediate health score based on 82 million man years of data. So we enable you to track, document, and benchmark your health in real time, completely hardware independent and completely content independent. 
We don't license any data. The data is owned by you. We don't do any advertising, nothing. The data belongs to you. It's your life. The health score is a number from one to a thousand, and we fully integrate all your biological data. And of course, we are looking at DNA sequencing, biomarkers, etc. So, if you are one, you are clinical dead. That's my sense of humor. If you are a thousand, you are a superwoman or a man, and there would be a hole here in the roof. So, the health score is based on 82 million man years of clinical data. It integrates a complete, holistic view of your life. So we used the Da Vinci lifestyle model, which was invented 500 years ago. Da Vinci said, "Human mankind consists of who you are, how you feel, and how you live." So we basically took 82 million man years of clinical data, worked with four of the world's leading professors: American professor, British professor, German professor, and Swiss professor, to challenge our development of the health score. We spent over two and a half years working on the backtracking of the data. So basically, today you have all the data on your body, your wealthy, your, your whole stress and well-being, and we support over 115 different activity styles. In a fun, dynamic way that runs automatically on your smartphone or on any tracker that Sibyl showed to you before. Why is the health score important for pharma healthcare? Because we run a 6.2 trillion dollar industry with no outcome. Let's say all of us in here we found a company together, and then next year our boss comes and asks, "So how did you guys do last year?" And we would say we don't have a profit loss statement. Can you imagine? It's criminal. It's insane. So basically, for everything else, you have a number when you drive. You have a phone number when you want to call your children. You live in a house number, but we have no outcome for health. So what we have done is we have created a personal health score. So this personal health score, as I said before, is a number from one to a thousand, calculated in real time, follows you 24/7. It becomes an asset in your life. Number two, we have a company health score, which is anonymous. So we calculate the health scores of the different employees without showing any confidential data to the employer, etc. So the company can see where are the risk factors in our company. Some companies have back problems. Other companies have sleeping order. Another company has high blood pressure. And last but not least, we are working with the EU of creating a country-specific health score. So in the future, you can look at SIP-based health scoring. You can look at country-specific health scoring, or even the EU health score. How is the health overall score? Europe against America, or Asia against Europe? So very important. Sibyl put it on the point before, and she doesn't work for us or no advertising whatsoever. We spent years with 100,000 users testing their psychological behavior with trackers. Reality is that Fitbit, Jawbone, and what they all call users, they throw away or stop using the device after three months, six months, etc. You have big companies like Swiss Re who gave out 10,000 Fitbit trackers, and people stop using it. Why? Because it's not relevant to your life. Once you know, and I love Fitbit, I use it myself, but there needs to be more. So make it relevant to your life. Make it easy to use. And add the fun factor, the gamification. So basically, we give you a health score. You become proud of that health score. You get upset with that health score, but you're like, I can do better or whatever. We do not only push people. You know, the normal five percent using trackers are all the people that are sports fanatics. We have people with a health score of 211. People weighing 300 kilos using Dakadu, and we don't say to those people, you should walk 10,000 steps a day because they would die of a heart attack. So basically, we motivate them to move forward in their life. Number two is you would have hundreds of different trackers, and I was asked by the guys from Lyft to show、uh, some of the latest、uh, from the freaky labs around the world. So this here is a two-channel EKG, Wilt Van Vanek skin sensor. You can shower with it, you can swim with it. It has one week of memory inside. It tracks your walking, it tracks your body temperature. It tracks the acidity of your skin, so your stress. I was wearing this in front of all the health ministers in Europe, where they saw my body temperature, they saw my stress level, my heartbeat, while I was speaking in front of all of the European health ministers. Another one that's a Slovenian company. This one is a spin-off out of Stanford. This one is from Slovenia. It's called Two in One. What it does is it gives you your cholesterol value. 
and um, your, um, uh, what is it called, diabetes, um, your cholesterol and um, glucose, glycose, sorry, uh, values in one. So you put it in your smartphone, you put a little dip, and you read your uh, blood values in real time on your smartphone. This one is my favorite, uh, and I don't have any favorites. This is the pill cam. You put it in olive oil, you drink some red wine before, and then you swallow it, and it travels through your body. It makes six pictures to your iPhone of your body. Now think about it. You, and for the ones who have uh, humor in the room, you don't have to reuse it. But uh, <laughs> basically, this pill cam will cost around $50. If you go to a hospital and have complete pictures taken inside, we talk over $1,000. So my whole point being, that in the future, I don't know if you read about Tyrannos in America, she's uh, America's youngest billionaire, she's doing nano sampling of blood, You're gonna, we have not even started yet with, you know, digital health. Here you see why the health score is very important, because it gives you a real-time assessment of your health, or of the company's health, or of a, con of a country's health. We have complete company health score reports, so we license out to the world's largest employers, health insurance companies. We work in Switzerland very closely with Swiss Re. Here you see an example of what a company score could look like. So you see we fully integrate, of course, you know, tracking. You see how much activity you do. You have pictures integrated. You can uh, invite your colleagues for a challenge and everything runs automatically on your smartphone and you have an avatar, which is your personal coach. We work with Samsung globally. This is the new Samsung watch. So we have completely integrated all of the different sensors from Samsung, your heartbeat, your movement, everything. And we show you in real time your health score. Samsung has over 700 million mobile phone clients. This is going to be a breakthrough in healthcare. So this becomes lifestyle-based insurances. So in the future, if you want to have a nice job, you would put your health score on LinkedIn. If you feel like it, you don't have to. But people will see, you know, this uh, new employee is looking after himself. Or this uh, person will go to one of the new public exchanges in America. I'm sure you have followed that you have public and private exchanges. So basically, you enter four data points, you see your health score, and then you can enter it into an automatic life insurance or health insurance generation. Last but not least, what I'm showing here today is the first time we show it. We have spent five years working on our navigation system. And you see here in real time what your health score is, what you've been doing. Ah, you lost a bit of weight or you gained weight, your health score changes. And you see in a navigation system, ah, I have a super health score, but I drink too little water. Or I have a super health score, I sleep too little. And last but not least, it should be fun. Health smells wrong. And again, I have four of the world's leading health professors on my advisory board. Health has this kind of touch with people that's a bit depressive and so on. So we make it interesting, absolutely independent of any hardware, any culture, and any content. Thank you so much.